So Ronnie, the chest is filled with 42 pounds of gold, coins, and nuggets hidden in the Rocky Mountains somewhere. If you are smart enough, you can find it. Here's how. Before you even think of beginning your quest to solve Forrest Fenn's riddle, take a minute and plan out your attack. There is information available which will greatly reduce your search area. So instead of wasting precious hours searching areas where the treasure chest can't possibly be, search smarter. Narrow down your area of attack before you start. For instance, Forrest Fenn has given us a whole bunch of clues, both in his writings and in interviews and blog postings. These clues allow us to massively reduce our potential search areas so what are some of the clues and what are some of the other hints? Well, let's talk about the importance of logic, Ronnie. So, I mean, obviously what, we're tr what you're trying to do is reduce your search area, not increase it. Yeah. It's thousands and thousands of square miles. If I, you were to 3, 000, I believe. cover all four states that it could possibly be in, so you need to, and he's left some clues and apparently one of them was a little inadvertent and probably wishes now he hadn't said it. But one of the things he said, it was during an interview, uh, and he said, if I was standing where the treasure chest is, I'd see trees, I'd see mountains, I'd see animals. I'd smell wonderful smells of pine needles or pinion nuts, sagebrush, and I know the treasure chest is wet. Mm. So first of all, he's he's said that the treasure chest is not underwater. So there's something else wet. I mean, there it could be, uh, you know, there could be a wetlands nearby, and water does tend to seep in there. But the biggest thing there is the uh, sagebrush and pinion nuts. Okay. Uh, and when you go through and you find out where those actually grow, you can reduce your search area by, I mean, uh, huge numbers. It says somebody did that. They looked for only areas in the four states that have the proper elevation, sagebrush, and pinion pine, and it narrows potential search areas down more than 99 Point nine percent. That's significant. All right, so now let's talk about some ideas. Uh, if you want to narrow down your search, uh, one of the things that you can utilize from wherever you might be in the country or in the world for that matter is Google Maps. Um, and we suggest that uh, you can use Google Maps or Google Earth as well. And in some of his blog postings, uh, Forrest Fenn has recommended that as well. Uh, okay, so let's talk about, can we learn something important? Yes, we can. Forrest has said that multiple people have given him the correct solve for the first two clues, and that multiple people have been within 200 to 500 feet of the, pressure, of the treasure. This tells us that the nine clues probably refer to a very small area, like a few hundred feet total, not miles and miles and miles, People who have solved number two clue correctly got within 200 feet of the treasure. That means it's highly likely that clues number three through nine are also within 500 feet of the treasure. Uh, and he's also said before, and we may have mentioned this, that it took him two trips uh, to get to this spot. So, mm -hmm. uh, although he accomplished it in one afternoon. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're looking for a location where the nearest parking or road is roughly 30 to 45 minutes away, that would be you know, probably like an appropriate time for an 80 year old to cover that much, uh, territory. And it would probably be at a trailhead or maybe a fishing spot somewhere. Okay. Keep that in mind. Now in the poem, you hear him talk about the Brown, the home of Brown. Um, the definition of home being permanent residence, an institution, the place where one lives, targeting, or at an end point. So here are some of the possible Browns to consider. Ranger Brown of the Lamar Ranger Station, 
Joe Brown of the Joe Brown put in Joe Brown Creek and Joe Brown Trail, Molly Brown House, anyone with a Brown surname, Bay, Beige, Brown, Ochre, Bronze, Chestnut, Cinnamon, Cinnabar, Hazel, Ecru, Fawn, Tan, Sepia, Puce, Russet, Umber, Sorrel, and Auburn. And Ronnie, there's some places named Brown as well. Brown's Canyon National Monument in Colorado. Now, I don't think that that is one that fits the category, honestly, because uh, it's quite a ways from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, Brown Mountain Campground. We're on the home of Brown under the poem. Okay. Um, Brown Mountain Campground, which is on the Wood River outside Mestestes, which might mean the end of warm waters. Uh, which is just downstream from Kerwin, which fits just so much of the puzzle. There is also Brown Cemetery in Montana, Brown Hill in New Mexico. That's something to consider. Because, you know, here's the thing. He did this all in one day. And so he could not have driven 3,000 miles, placed the treasure, driven 3,000 miles back, right. and done that in one day. Yeah. That's not conceivable. So... You got to think about that. How far could he possibly have gone in one day? Well, the the other thing I'm thinking about here is, uh, he's 80 years old. Mm -hmm. How resistant is he to uh, current technology? Oh, it, it, does he? Uh, so is he using mm -hmm. old topographic maps, maybe that mm -hmm. have a lot of detail, uh, a lot of the fine print that lists like every square inch is a, a tract and it'll say Brown's tract or Brown's ravine or whatever it is. Is he using something that on Google maps, you can't, it, it will give you some names, mm -hmm. but they're usually broken down by per square mile. Okay. Yeah. So, and you're, that's still a lot of ground to cover. You need to even get closer than that. Well, he says the home of Brown appears to be very important as a clue. Forrest has said that if you knew the house of Brown, you could walk right to the treasure. So it appears that the first clue is WWWH and HOB, house of Brown, is the second. Uh, if you can locate the home of Brown correctly, the treasure can be yours in short order, supposedly. So, you know, Ronnie, I thought um, I might mention a couple of the uh, comments that we received on the last video that we did. Uh, we talked about, oh, in, in one of the uh, quotes, I'm sorry, comments, a uh, guy was saying that, what about the cost of shipping of the book? Who gets that money? Look, I'm going to put all of that to rest right now. All of that, you know, selling the book, how much money. The deal is this. The man is worth a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Okay. So he's not trying to make any money off of this book. That's what we would do. Exactly. In fact, <laughs> it's in the process. It's in the work. <laughs> and we don't have a book. We have a pamphlet. Yeah. Get it today. It's a trifle pamphlet, send it, though. Yeah, send for it. The more you know. Uh, okay, so forget about that. Throw that out the window. And it was really funny because one lady, she, she made the comment, he doesn't need the money from the book. Do the math. Nobody needs the money, but if money's coming in, nobody's going to turn it down either. The funny point was, Ronnie, she sent me this comment, which she ended, do the math. And then the next thing she did was subscribe to our channel. <laughs> she did the math, apparently. <laughs> All right, so the home of Brown is very, very important in the uh, clues. Well, and there's something else that I've read. Mm -hmm. So there are uh, places like uh, apparently Mount Sheridan now used to be called Brown Mountain. Aha. Uh -huh. So, and this has been buried for... How many years now? Over 10 years, I think right? it's eight years. Yeah, so um, who knows? Maybe the map that he's dealing with... Is an old map. Is an old map, mm. and it still lists as brown. You know, if, if 
somebody names Brown settles an area, you have Brown's Corner, you have Brown's Ravine, you have Brown's Mountain, you have Brown's Gorge. Everything in that area is going to be Brown something. Mm -hmm. uh, but as time goes on, those titles change. So, again, if he's using old, if he refuses, and we have a person that refuses to <laughs> yes, we do. Use new technology. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have somebody that's in that boat and they're using older maps, uh, if they're looking at uh, you know something like I said, an old topographic map by a, uh, one of the parks, it very likely is going to have some old terminology on there. For sure, it's something to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, a lot of people believe that the nine clues that you need to solve the puzzle, which is the treasure, begin between begin and the word begin and the word cease in the poem. And here's what I mean. Begin it where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down, not far, but too far to walk. Put in below the home of Brown. From there, it's no place for the meek. The end is ever drawing nigh. There'll be no paddle up your creek just heavy loads and water high. If you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. Begin and cease is the last, first and last words of that stanza of the poem. And in between are your nine clues. But do these nine clues represent the nine clues? Of course, we won't know for sure until somebody actually finds a treasure. It seems to be, at the very least, plausible. Or another possibility, if the treasure's puzzle is mostly faceted, for instance, if it first describes a journey to a starting point, and then the very same poem clues describe your journey from that starting point to the treasure, there's the possibility that there are three different sets of clues. One, the entire poem from beginning to end. Two, the poem for, as I mentioned, between begin and cease, and the poem from begin to end. It's very complicated, but as you look at the poem and you spend time with it, it becomes easier to make sense of it, I believe. Well, and I know that uh, there's a lot smarter people working on this than us. Oh, for sure. Uh, and credit to you people. Yes. But uh, again, I think sometimes people are overlooking the fact that this man was 72 over 70 years old when he hid the treasure and he said time and time again because he doesn't want people to get hurt that don't go someplace that a 72 year old man would not be able to get to um you know if you are if you're climbing down a, the face of a, a a cliff he's not going to do that mm -hmm. uh he's already said it's not underwater um it really does it takes I, I, we all know it's out there. It's still out there, but uh, I think there's there's something that somebody is missing. I would bet that people have a couple of the clues figured out, but not everybody has all of the clues figured out. And I know they're assembling this pro team to try to you know treasure hunters to try to come up with and put their their heads together and you know brainstorm the the clues. I think that probably is going to be the best bet. That's how it's going to get solved eventually, is people working together instead of individually. Well, it hasn't worked to this point. Uh, some question whether or not the treasure has been found. Many say that they know where it is, but when they go there and they don't find it, they think all of a sudden that, oh, this is a big scam. Oh. It's not real. Right. Or, you know, um, uh, we're close to it, but we nobody's found it yet. No. I know that to be true. It's there. It's still out there. Yeah. And, um, as I mentioned in a couple other episodes, the weather may be prohibiting somebody from actually finding it in the year 2018. But, as I commented back to this person, uh, this snow is melting even at the higher elevations as we speak. Yep. And um, the month of June... Uh, is it, it, it tends to be a much warmer month. June, July, and August should be prime treasure hunting months. Yeah. I, you might go out to look for the treasure, and you might find yourself in shoulder to shoulder 
<laughs> there might be so many people out there looking for it, waiting for the weather to change. But, uh, you know, we'd love to hear from you. Your comments are greatly appreciated on this subject matter, and uh, we comment back. Uh, we do our best to reply as soon as we get the message and have a few seconds to gather our thoughts and get back to you. We love your comments. Keep them coming. You know what would make us very, very happy is if one of our listeners oh. actually found it. Oh, my gosh. Just based on something that we may have sparked in them. Yeah. Uh, that would be, oh, we would love it so much. And I, I know for a fact that many of you who uh, have seen our show before, uh, maybe it seems as though we're covering different s subject matters and such. But really what's happening is we're reading as much as we possibly can on this. Yeah. And trying, to, there is no new news. No, not there really. There is no new news on this. No. And maybe that's the calm before the storm. Even if you read the message boards, there's nothing really new on there. Mm -hmm. It's And there can't be. I mean, he's given all the clues he feels is necessary to locate the treasure. Uh, occasionally, he does an interview, and he might blurt something out. Yeah, it slips, slips out. And in those cases, that might be the newest news, but even then there's not been anything really new in that respect. So we will continue to scour the internet to, in an effort to bring you the very latest on the Fen treasure. We truly are fascinated by this story and uh, we hope you enjoy watching our videos as we continue to learn more and more about a man who um, is trying to leave a legacy. A man who's done a lot of things in his life, made a lot of money, uh, lives a lifestyle that he just enjoys, which includes reading books and writing books. And um, we'll, we'll bring you the very latest that we can find. Thank you for watching. I'm Lou Gallagher. Corvette Ronnie. You'll find the information on both of us below. Thank you for watching. The Fen Treasure on Men Are So Smart. There it is. <laughs>